Hello everybody and welcome to our messy church hell time. I know this seems very, very weird coming to you on the telly or on your phone or on your notebook or on your pad, iPad or whatever it is. Uh, normally we have a bunch of uh, moms and dads and children sat out and then uh, we have stuff going on front, but we're doing the very best we can in this kind of a situation. I hope everyone's well. I hope you're having a really, really good Easter weekend, even though we're kind of stuck and we can't get out to the seaside or we can't go to the park and all those kind of things. This will soon pass, okay? We'll work together and make our way through this. But this is Easter uh, Messy Church. This is our Easter Messy Church huddle time. We just want to welcome you. So I just kind of want to take you sort of through the steps of what we do. Normally we have our craft session first, we, that we get everyone together and that we uh, have a little, uh, just a very short time up front that we explain what all the crafts are. I did that in a video and many of you have received the crafts already. And then we have our huddle time, which is about 15 or 20 minutes that we get together. We have all different sorts of things that we do. And then we have a really, really nice meal that we have together. So we're just gonna do the best we can with that situation. So with the crafts, I hope uh, for those who have received them already, hope you really had a good time with it. Uh, whether it was the, the, the face mask, uh, the mask with the, the bunnies or whatever it was. And, and uh, the, the rainbow scratch art and the, the woodcraft with the resurrection scene or the puzzles or the chocolate. Everyone eat your chocolate, was it good? Hope it was, I think it was. Um, and so for all those who have not yet received your craft bag, we're gonna work really hard to be able to get them out this week, uh, Wednesday or Thursday. Okay, I think that'll be the day. So don't give up. Uh, it, these, these bags will be somewhat different. Uh, even amongst this lot, there'll be some variations because we've not been able to get all the materials the exact the same, but we're doing the very best that we can. So then we want to come to this thing of the huddle time. So we're now in our huddle time right now, and this is the time where we, do, where we kind of wrap it all up and we will maybe have a song, we'll have a story, we'll have maybe a game, all different sorts of things that we do during this huddle time. So I'm gonna welcome you on board. I hope you enjoy it. We only have 15 or 20 minutes, so let's get going. So when we start our huddle time, the first thing that we do after we, have, we, well, we welcome everyone is that we have our candle. So we have a candle uh, up here, and we have it right here. And we have a candle to remind us that Jesus is the light of the world. And we always have someone to come and light our candle. This is a really popular thing. Everybody wants to do it, but we only can have one off for each messy church. So uh, I'm going to ask, is anyone who would like to do that for us today? Just hold your hand up. Okay, you, why don't you come on up? Okay, now our candle is lit, and what we do is we have a little prayer that we say together, and I'm going to pray and ask God to help us have a really good huddle time together. So here we go, all together on the count of three. One, two, three. Lord, we welcome you this afternoon as the light of the world, even though it may be morning when you're watching now, okay? So I'm going to pray. God, thank you for today, this morning, this afternoon, this evening, whenever everyone is watching our huddle time. I pray that you would help us to have a really good time together and that we could understand just a little bit more about what this Easter thing is all about. I want to pray for all the families that are in Rosington, uh, for all those who are struggling maybe because of having to stop at home and, and all this stuff and not being able to go out and play and go to the park and go out and do things, especially during this Easter holiday break. And I, Father, we ask that you would give everyone strength we pray uh, for our leaders, we pray for the NHS, that we would be able to get through this very, very soon. Thank you for this time, in Jesus' name, amen. So we're going to go right into the story and try and help each other to understand a little bit more what this is all about. Then we're going to have a bit of a magic trick, and then we're going to sing our very special Messy Church song. Here we go. Okay, for those who have been to Messy Church before, our huddle time is going to look different as it, as, than it normally would. But uh, I like doing the crafts too. And for anyone who's 
been coming to Messy Church at any time, you know I, I like doing stuff. And sometimes I have sort of jobs that I do, or I'm, I'm doing photos, or I'm doing wood stuff, or whatever. But uh, I did mine like this, and yours doesn't have to look like this, but I just did mine like this. Uh, that's the base. Uh, you could do yours any way, but I like all the different colors. And then I did my mountain like this. I did my rock like that. I did my Mary like that. And then I just finished up my Jesus like that. And so I wanted to just have a, just a couple minutes to get together and think about this, because a lot of people get confused about this whole Easter thing and, and, and Jesus um, becoming alive again. And a lot of people get confused as to why. So I'm going to put my, my, my model together and we'll just kind of talk just a little bit while, while I get my model together. So there's the place that, uh, of, of, of the little mountain with, a, with, with the opening that, uh, that someone would have put Jesus inside. Now, when Jesus died on the cross, he did it because the, the Bible says that we all have something called sin. And sin is all the bad things that we do. And when we open up our heart and say, Jesus, I want you to come into my life and to forgive me, Jesus said that he promised that he would do that. Now, how can he do that? Well, he can do that because when he died on the cross, Jesus had no sin. Jesus was born in a very different way like we were. Jesus was born in a special way by a special woman called Mary. And because Mary um, um, did, um, was able to have Jesus in that special way, Jesus did not have sin. And so he was the only one. Now, he is God. And, and uh, he did not have sin. He is the only one that could have died for me to accept my punishment. Now I'm not sure about you if you would if you would take someone someone else's punishment. I remember when I was eight or nine or ten, I have two brothers, and if either of them got into trouble, there's no way that I'd that I would want to take the punishment for my two brothers. I said I was thinking to myself, you know what, they should get their own punishment. But you know what, Jesus wasn't like that. He said that he loved us so much that he was willing to take our punishment on him. And that's why he died on the cross. And so then two men very carefully took Jesus down from on the cross. And then he, they took some, cloth, some cloths and they wrapped his, his body very carefully with the cloths. And then they put Jesus inside of the tomb. Now I realized... I've got wood there and I can't put him inside. But they put, they put him inside the tomb and then they took a stone and they put it over, over the hole so that no one would be able to, uh, to, uh, to get him out. Now there were some people who didn't like Jesus and didn't like Jesus' followers. And they asked the king, they said, King, would you please set uh, some people to guard the tomb, to guard this area so that his followers would not be able to steal his body out. So the king said, "Okay." So he put the, so he rolled the, so he rolled a stone in front of it. And then he set guards in front of that stone to make sure no one would steal his body out. But then early on that very first Sunday morning, the Bible says that Mary came along, and there was another Mary. And they came, and there's all kinds of different things that were happening. We talked about a bit of an earthquake and all kinds of things. But the stone was not in front of the tomb anymore, but it had rolled away. And they could see that Jesus was not in the tomb anymore, but that he had come alive again. And what that showed is that Jesus, everything that Jesus said and everything that Jesus did showed that, he was, that it was true because he was able to become alive again after he was crucified on that cross. Now, I know that's a lot of stuff, and that may seem confusing, and because you're unable, not able to be here, so we could, we could uh, talk a little bit, maybe have some questions. If you do have any questions about any of that, please, please ask me. You can ask your mom to, 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 um, to, to message me, and we'll get all of the questions answered as best I can, okay? So thank you so much. I'm going to do one, one other thing real quick before we do our song. I want to do a magic, magic trick, and hopefully that you'll they, they, really enjoy that. Hi, everyone. We're going to have a bit of a, of a, of a magic trick. Uh, I really like this one because I think it helps to, 
to, to, to, to show the story of Jesus and Jesus becoming alive again in a little bit of a different way. So here I have an empty box. I've got an empty tube right here like this. So I'm going to take it up to the camera and I'm going to go like that. Yeah, you can see me. I can see you. I'm going to turn it like this. Give it a couple taps. You can see it's quite hard. No hocus pocus here. On the outside of my tube is a picture of what it may have looked like where Jesus was put. So I'm going to take this I'm going to put it inside of our box just like that. So the Bible says that as Jesus was on the cross and that he died, that there was two men who took his body down from the cross and they brought it to the area where the tomb was. And they took his body and they carefully wrapped his body in cloths. And they took his body and they put it inside of the tomb. Now you would think that if there's anything that is put inside of somewhere else, it would stay. That makes sense to me. Well, if your mom gave you some socks and said to, to take your socks and put them in a drawer, what would you wear in, in the next morning, where do you think your socks would be? In the drawer. That makes sense. Well, after, uh, after the two men had put Jesus inside of the tomb, there was the first day he would have been inside the tomb. There was a second day that he would have been inside the tomb. But early on that third day, the Bible says that there was Mary and, and another woman that had gone up to look inside of the to, to, to see where uh, you know what, what 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 was going on with the tomb because there was guards that were that, that were there, and when they had gotten there, they saw that the stone was rolled away, and they looked inside, and you know what they saw? They saw. They didn't see Jesus, and they said, oh no, where's he gone, where's he gone? <coughs> but here's the amazing thing is, uh, the, all kinds of things were happening, and so the Bible actually says that there was an angel that was there, and that angel said this, that angel said, Mary, don't you know that Jesus isn't here anymore, he is alive just like he said. And you may say, oh, Pastor Eric, uh, wait a minute. Wasn't Jesus in the tomb when you put him in? No, let me take it out. Let me take the tube off again so you can see that Jesus is no longer in the tomb. He's risen just like he said. I tell you what, let's go on now and let's sing our messy church song. Okay, here we go. This is our Messy Church theme song. And I want to encourage everyone to follow along. The words are going to appear right up on the screen, right about now. There they are. By the way, if you don't know the song, don't worry about it. But the tune is the same tune as our God is a great big God. For anyone who's had me in assembly at Grange Lane or Corndale, it's the same tune, but just different words. The words are right there. So you can follow along. So you need to get up, get up off the settee, get up off the chairs, and sing along with me. And here we go. Those who have been here before, when we get to the bit where we love to be with our family, 
I want you to go to somebody in your family, your sister, your brother, uh, your mom, your dad, if your puppy, go on and pet, pet your puppy and give them a hug. If your puppy don't like a hug, go give them a hug. Pat, pat them, tell them you love them, tell your mom you love them, tell your brother you love them, tell your sister you love them. Oh, really? Yeah. Tell your dad you love them. And here we go, when we get down to that bit, here we go, ready? One, two, three, four. kind of messy church huddle time and so I want to encourage you to be looking out on Facebook for the next messy church in, uh, in May and uh, we'll get together again and have another great time have a great day happy Easter see you later